What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Hi-Fi Hour. I am here with my buddy, David Solomon, from the company Quobas. How are you doing today, David? Good, good. Thanks, Mike. I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I want to thank you uh, for coming on. Um, I know this this impromptu meeting was sparked by a video I posted this morning about Spotify Hi-Fi and how I'm in the process of making a transition over to Cool Buzz. So you and I have been chatting for a while. I know about, you know, meeting up in, in this kind of platform and, and talking about streaming and me being the CD fanatic that I am. I, you know, I, I have admitted in many videos that I do stream, so <laughs> it shouldn't come to a surprise to anybody, but, um, but yeah, I, I wanted to come on and, and talk to you and learn from you and, uh, I think this is a, a great a great way to do it. So uh, how have you been? How's Cobuzz and how is everything going on over there? Cobuzz is doing great. Um, we, uh, we've been making huge progress in the United States in the last three years. It's been really, it's, that's been a really fun progress because uh, when we first started, um, when we first started promoting Cobuzz, nobody knew what it was uh, nobody knew what it was and nobody knew how to say it and so it was it was fantastic going from um walking past my first uh, uh outdoor dinner at cedia in um in uh, san diego mm -hmm. and I, I was passing this table and this one guy was saying Oh no, it's Cubas, and the other guy's going. No, it's uh, uh, Quabas, and the other guy. Oh well, no, it's Cuba. I mean, they were just going through all of these iterations of of how to say the name, but they sit there and talk for like I don't know a minute or so about you know how, how just to pronounce the name. Since then, um, we've made some really really good inroads in um, in the United States and in the world. We've all. We opened up um, since we opened up in the United States. We've opened up in all, all of the um, uh, all of the Nordic countries, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, we're just about to open up in all of the Latin speaking countries, and mm -hmm. then we'll be uh, going to Japan. So yeah, it's been a really really fast growth curve over the last three years, and it looks like that's nowhere near slowing down. Well, I. <clears throat> I know it's becoming a standard in the um, uh, upper high end audio world uh, to use Cool Buzz as the reference for streaming. And I say that because uh, I do write for StereoNet and they instructed me when I'm reviewing something and I'm streaming that I should be using Cool Buzz. So, oh, really? I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, uh, um, I'm sure, I don't know. That there's some kind of uh, I know there's no marketing deal that you know I, I'm I'm a part of, but I I'm not being paid to say that, but I, I I think it's cool that you know you guys have made such an impact in such a quick amount of time because I didn't know about you guys until I'd say maybe a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, when I went to a um, Colorado Audio Society meetup group. And this guy had uh, his tablet going and he was showing off his, you know, open baffle speakers, beautiful, beautiful um, setup. And he was on this UI that I didn't recognize. I'm like, what is that? And he's like, oh, it's cool buzz. It has, you know, the best stuff. And then I went home and looked it up and I'm like, the catalog's a little slim, not really a lot of music I'm into, a lot of audio file music as the music not really my jam at the time um now now we have a whole nother story because now like i said i'm in the middle of a migration over and you're about to save me you just saved me a lot of time because prior to the show guys i was explaining to david that i am physically moving over all of my playlists one by one from spotify over to cool buzz and he's like, why? Why are you doing that? And you said that there is a website 
call. Yeah, yeah. If you're uh, if you're if you're transferring from any service to any other service, first off, you'll never get it done manually because you know you've probably been on the service a while, and you know going from one service and then going to the other service and looking up that artist. Oh well, there's the album, there's the cut. It just just doesn't happen. It's it's too much work. Um, so there's this um, there's a website out there called Sound. I think they pronounce it soundies, but it's it's s o u n d i i z dot com, and that'll take any of your music from any service or really even your own library, uh, playlist, favorite artist, um, anything that you've got um, uh, highlighted in any other service, um, and it'll it'll transfer all of that as it sits to Cobus. What you'll find out, it'll give you a report too. So let's say there's a, uh, there's one uh, playlist that you um, download. It's got a hundred songs on it, but it only downloaded 93%. So it downloaded 93 songs, but there's seven that aren't there. Um, Most of the time you can actually go into Cobus and search for those missing units and find them under a different catalog number than Spotify had them listed or whatnot. But you'll pretty much get most everything that you've got, um, uh, you know, transferred from one service to another. Uh, that's even including your own library. Um, well, I've got like, I don't know, three terabytes of, of music on my own library. And I pointed um, soundies to my library and it took everything that it could find and, and put on, um, put on to Cobus. There's some stuff that I've got that's just super eclectic that yeah, that's not streaming that probably never will stream. That's mm-hmm. where I tell people, that's where you want your hard drive. That's where like, there's no, there's really absolutely no reason to burn your CDs into your hard drive anymore because we probably have it in a better format anyway. Even if it's 24 bit over 16 bit, um, it's still more information than would fit on a disc. So if you've ever been one of those people that have tried to maintain a hard drive over the years, um, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing. And when your right. hard drive, out the the data never transfers exactly like you've got it you know curated on your own system so it's just it's kind of a difficult thing and it's just not necessary anymore i did it for maybe 10 years before streaming and full resolution started and i did it because you know it was a labor of love i wanted my stuff accessible to me in an easy way um and so i was using like when it first started, I was just like Apple Music just to bring I'm everything. In, I'm in the process right now. Of, yeah, well, that's, just, that's the point. It's I'm like thinking. if you look at like probably half those discs you've got well, in you, six. You have it. Yeah. We'll have it in sometimes. You got any Pink Floyd albums in there? We, we've got that stuff. I do. In like, yeah. I so we've got that just stuff. Back, uh, I just did the P's yesterday. But, uh, but well, the, the thing that I find, um, and you're right. I'd say probably 90% of the music I have here, you guys have. Um, there are certain rogue albums that aren't available um, that I, I like to, I would like to have backed up just in case, you know, I mean, those are the ones that you want to do because it's like, you've only got so much time, right? So you could literally put, you know, all 2000 CDs that you've got onto a hard drive, but I, I always think why, because you've got it in a better, <laughs> format with us and then plus why even waste your time putting something on a disc that's 1644 when it's available in bit perfect streaming at 2496 you know right. to get that quality you would have had to go out and spend 30 40 bucks on the SACD right? right and then figure out how you're going to put it onto your your system that's so there's the just thing. no way to do it these days yeah i, I would have thought they would have Maybe it was just for space sake, but, um, you know, SACDs didn't really catch on, you know, uh, caught on for a little bit. Uh, some artists took to it, but it's just uh, the regular 16 bit 44.1 is where, where it ended. And I think that's uh, it's good, good enough for some people, um, uh, you know. Uh, it, it is. It is, Mike. And, and yeah, I got to tell you, it's not something that I'm going, oh, well, if you don't have the high res, you don't have anything. That's really not that's really mm-hmm. not true. It's 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 
a lot of the stuff they've recorded in high res is absolutely no doubt superior to the stuff that's mm -hmm. in 1644. But there's other stuff in 1644 that is either just got an unbelievably wonderful recording to it. Um, and, and, you know, you're going, wow, how much better could it get? Uh, Cookie Marenko uh, recorded an album for, Tony Fichiro, this was years ago. This is probably in the, I'm going to say the 80s. It's probably the 80s. Um, and it's his title track band. It's in 1644. But she's so good. Mm -hmm. She makes this thing sound like it's in high resolution. Most engineers don't have that ability, right? Most engineers get caught up with the whole 1644 thing because you don't really have that much headroom to deal with when they start recording in 24 bit, all of a sudden you've got exponentially more headroom that you can mess around with. So you're much, much more likely to hit that 16 or 20 bit mark than if you start off with 16, because if you start off with 16 and a recording set set up, you're probably hitting eight. If you're really bad, 10, if you're okay, 12, May in 14, if you're really, really good, but most 16 bit CDs are that's their format, but the actual recording never even hits 16 bit. So when you get it up to that 24 bit word, you can start getting some resolution in there that we've never seen. That's why the albums that you've seen over the last five years have you noticed just the bandwidth that people are recording with these days? It's like so much better collectively um, or globally than it's ever been. Well, I actually, I just put out a, a video a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago about the loudness wars. Oh, and yeah. I, well, that's, still, that's still happening a bit. Well, I heard that uh, maybe you can clarify this for me. I hope you can. Um, I saw online that, and I should have fact checked this before I said it in the video, but I saw online that certain uh, streaming services, if not all streaming services, are putting some kind of... Um, limiter or something on you know to kind of tone down the music to make it things more consistent and in doing so the tracks that are affected by dynamic compression sound absolutely horrible and this was kind of in a way a deterrent for for future you know productions and this is something i keep hearing about over and over again it's people say yeah you know 24 bit this that and the other thing but at the end of the day a lot of people go you know what? It all boils down to how it was recorded and how it was mastered originally. Always. And, then, Always. and then from there, then you can take advantage of all this bit rate and sample rate and stuff like that, because then you have something to work with. Because if it sounds like poo poo before it gets to, you know, it gets to you guys, then there's nothing you guys can do you can't you there's no streaming service or cd can make the music sound better from what how it was originally recorded i mean it's impossible but i don't know what, so what do you, think, no what do you think about the wars and what's quoba is doing to 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 try to thwart the type of nefarious behavior um well we, we actually write this a very second we don't do anything. We just okay. let it go. Uh, however, we are looking at uh, LS, um, uh, LSFU um, loudness so that we can get a more consistent output um, mm -hmm. without affecting dynamic range that's the big thing you don't want to affect dynamic range or you don't want to just try to compress everything into the same volume level um okay. there's a process uh to do this without losing dynamic range um mm -hmm. so we're in the process of actually um enacting something like that right now it'll be probably a while before it's done but right now the dynamic range that you get on cobuzz is exactly what the the uh, studios send us so um from time to time you will get a louder song or a softer song um and that's just the way it is once we get the whole L um lsfu um algorithms done that'll that'll change a bit but for right now it's like if you got it directly from the studio this is exactly how it would be which is really the way that we wanted it at least to begin with because we want to do everything as unaltered as possible that sounds like there's a possibility that we would all alter something we want 
everything totally unaltered and we will never do anything uh, to a recording to upsample it or make make it look like it sounds better. Um, the labels do a good job of that themselves. And I think one of the points you were making is some of the stuff that's being even re-released or released in high res that, that, you know, sounds terrible. It doesn't sound any better. I'll give you a great example. Um, I'm a big Edgar Winter fan from the early seventies. I love that guy. He was just, you know, so much fun to listen to, but if you listen to his album, my favorite album by Edgar Winter is called white trash. It sounds horrible. There is nothing that can ever be done to that album. You could put it out in 32, 384, and it's still going to sound absolutely horrible because, to your point, it was just recorded bad, badly to mm -hmm. begin with. So we don't try to manipulate any of that. We just we just play straight out what the labels the, what the labels give us. And then in other cases, like oh, um, a Billie Eilish. I mean, you get you get albums in from from this artist and that and you go oh my god why couldn't they have recorded led zeppelin like this you know it's just like exactly. unbelievable uh, just unbelievable. clean crisp beautiful sound yeah yeah and worthy of high resolution so sometimes high resolution is simply a marketing thing that the labels do mm -hmm. and then sometimes it's like really oh my gosh i cannot believe how good that sounds and that can be some older recordings too. It's not necessarily new recordings. There's a one of my favorite uh, albums on Cobuzz that I actually bought. I think it was about sixty bucks when I bought it, but it was called um, uh, "It's Illinois Jacket." He recorded this thing in 1956, I believe it was released in early '57. So it's a mono album, um, mm. but they got a master tape and they recorded this thing in '24. I believe it's. 2496 it might be 24192 um and then we've got the exact same album in 1644 you would not believe just opening up the input on that album the difference of sound quality one is like oh my gosh he is right there in the room with me and the other is while those are nice notes i, I really enjoy the music but mm -hmm. so it's really kind of a it, it, it's a, I don't want to say it's a pot shot, but just know that just because it says 2496 or 1644 is no determination of how the actual thing is recorded. And that's a great point, Mike. Not to mention when people are also using it within their systems, <clears throat> it also has to do with output stage, the DAC they're using, things like that can also really open things up and, and make things really incredible for for themselves. Oh, yeah. I'm actually my next uh, review uh, I'm doing. It's uh, on the NP5 Prisma from Premiere. It's their streamer, and uh, I will be using Quobuzz as reference. Um, yeah, you know, one thing that happened yesterday that I feel kind of embarrassed I didn't know about already was that I was okay. So there's this album by this band called uh of, of verona and i cannot find their cd anywhere and i wanted their cd a, a very specific one and i'm like why i found two one on discogs one on ebay both of them over 150 bucks and i'm like come on i'm not going to pay 150 bucks for this so i'm like well let me see if i can find the, the flack files you know somewhere look on you know i look online guess who had the flack files for sale for me to own Quobuzz. I didn't know you could buy music on Quobuzz. Yeah, I always, a lot of I was, uh, I was going to you guys is like I was going to seven digital and HD tracks and uh, HD tracks and all that other stuff. But you guys, you I could I bought the whole album. Yeah, we do it for a uh we do it for a specific reason. Um we, we, we want to support the artists. Sure. No matter what anyone tells you, streaming does not pay very much. Um, and there's just really, I, unless the labels figure something else out, because they're the ones who get about 70% of every dollar that a streaming service gets, uh, mm -hmm. unless they're willing to figure out something, it, streaming is just probably not going to uh, be paying a lot unless you're a major artist and then you're doing fine with it. Um, 
but the way that that artists do get paid and I do a show um, a couple times a month called Cobas Live and, and in that show I always um, ask people to support their artists by by downloading their their uh, their music you can buy uh, almost any album on Cobas and high res uh, and it's not they're they're very inexpensive comparatively speaking but artists get paid on scale so I always, even if you're just, even if you're one hundred percent streamer, I go look. The, it's the new band that's out. They really need your support. Let's say it's Larkin Poe or somebody that's just starting out. Go mm. to go to, their, go to their page, download an album. You might not even ever use it, but it's a great way to donate. And it's the same way I try to encourage people that when you go to a concert. Go to the concert, have a great time. Don't walk out empty, empty-handed. Get the T-shirt, get the album, get something that's going to help support these these band members because their cheese has been severely moved. Yeah. Right? It's I read this yeah. book back in the eighties. Who moved my cheese? It's like yeah, mm-hmm. if there's any cheese that's been moved, it's the musicians. These aren't sometimes the greatest uh, business people or the greatest marketing minds. They're great musicians. So anytime I get a chance to support these guys in any way I can, um, I'll do that. But what you've mentioned, Mike, the download store pays artists on scale. So it's a real wonderful way to, to support them. And that way we don't have to do controversial podcasts and things like that that have nothing to do with music we want to stay all about the music so if we can um um help uh help with with our revenue stream with with uh downloads because people are going to be buying them anyway and we can help the Mm -hmm. artist that's a great way to do things and it really kind of it's all this helps you this helps us this is just helps the whole music community and i'm really really proud of that what, did, what an admirable thing to do. That that, that 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 is good. That's a good French philosophy for Quobas because, you know, they, uh, they're they really – that's that's something else. That is really something else um, because I know they're the – they're the leaders of, of sound quality. I, I, can, I can comfortably say that. You don't – I'll say it for you because I know you're in the industry. You don't want to be like, I'm, we're the best, you know, even though you know you're the best. But – you know, you are the best. So quick story, quick tangent, quick story. <clears throat> I was at my friend, Mike, Mike Lucia's house, and he has, I would say a setup close to the six figure range, right? Really nice stuff. And we're listening to a song on title and, and I get to say this stuff cause it's, it's my show. So <laughs> we're listening to a song on title and then I'm like, you know what? Let's go ahead and listen to that on Cobas. There is an a, an apparent, not even a not even a slight nuance, an apparent audible improvement going from title to Cobas, from MQA to to Cobas. It, it was an apparent improvement, and not only in soundstage, imaging, clarity, uh, bass got better, um, everything, everything. So I don't know that's why I kind of, I've never really messed with title. So I, I really I let them do their thing. They have the MQA thing going on. A lot of products are adopting their, their format. Not for me. Not, not after I heard that, especially not after I heard that. So uh, do you get a lot of those stories that I just told you? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it could go either way. Frankly, some, some people would, would say, Oh, well, you know, I've never heard anything that sounds so good as MQA. That's where I'm going. Uh, and then there are others that go, oh, I really like the way that the, just the straight flack is presented on CoBuzz. Uh, but, yeah, I do hear it a lot. Um, it's an emotional and a political. Um, it's, it, it, it's as political as it is emotional. And that's why I just kind of hang out of it. It's like, yeah, oh, you love MQA, MQA. Oh, you should go, you should go to title. The thing I really do dig about, um, about the way we do it is you just don't need any special gear. You don't need to unfold anything. It just, you know, you, you, you've got a standard, DAC that'll do 24192. You hit play, and that's exactly what 
what you're getting. There's no jumping through hoops to to be able to play the highest resolution. Uh, does this unfold once or twice? It's really seriously just you know hit play and and let it let let it go with what the studio sent us from their from sure. their masters or wherever they're getting their 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 collection from. I'm a huge proponent of keeping it simple. You know, I love yeah, that it. helped us a lot. <laughs> you know, and, and it looks like you guys have kept it as simple as possible. Your UI is is I'd say uh, pretty basic. You know, not it's not really very complicated. Basic, yeah. mm-hmm. Not very complicated. Um, I think that was the biggest gripe people had was, oh, we love the Spotify UI, but but you're getting MP3 quality sound, and it's the the gross <laughs> part is it's like when I. You when I A B Spotify to Quobus, it's like another I'm on another planet, you know. Yeah, and, and also a lot of this is is what you get used to. The only people that like change are wet babies. So if you go from one streaming uh, a platform to another, and this has happened to me multiple times because I've done them. I mean, pretty much all since this program came out, and um, I think it was like the early 2000s called Mog M O G. That's when mm-hmm. I started streaming. It was like they started streaming in 320 and they had all these just crazy great features. I loved using the unit. Well, as soon as I went, I went to work for Tidal um, right. and brought Tidal into the country in uh, 2014. Um, then I started using Tidal. Well, when I went from Mog to Tidal, I'm going, wow, this is horrible. It's a, and the reason is because humans get used to buttons being in certain places and certain ways to do things. And really all it takes is just playing with any of the other services. They're all pretty good um, for, I don't know, 30, 40 days. And then all of a sudden you go, oh, oh, I get it. Now that's where this button is. But really nobody likes change in any difference of a ui is going to be a user interface is going to be uh bothersome to a lot of people that don't like change um i'm so used to our our um ui at this point i can make it pretty much dance but there's things that we're not gonna have or that we don't currently have that some of the other services have that are more convenience features like cobuzz is just cobuzz this is all we do right um so we don't have a big shopping service that we can you know, have subsidy or sell computers or other things. We only do audio. We only do streaming. So our teams are probably um, – Spotify probably has more people holding doors for other people than we've got on our whole team. That's that's how small our team is. Uh, yeah. So we'll never be the ones that are going to go – Oh, here's the latest, greatest feature. You're th- this is going to be on on Cobus first. That rarely happens. Um, like the connect feature, what a great feature! Spotify started that. Then Title went to it. We're looking into it, and we're going to be enacting it uh, uh, soon as well. Um, but instead of you know 185 people on a on an engineering team to do something like that, we've got like four. So right. it just going to take us longer because the thing that we value the very most above anything else is the way our system sounds and the amount of editorial content that we can get in that system that really close more closely um, allows people to connect with their artists on a real knowledge basis right we want people to know their artists or at least give the opportunity to know their artists or their genre Okay. I have a couple more questions. Sure. Um, the AI. Now, uh, Spotify has, you know, obviously been working. Like you mentioned, they have huge teams that work around the clock on this kind of stuff. Their their curation for, you know, their weekly weekly artist picks or weekly picks, weekly song picks, whatever, whatever it's called. Um, it, it, it's decent, you know. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. haven't really explored that with Quo Buzz. Do you guys have a similar AI that that curates music for your personal taste, depending on what you normally listen to, and then introduces you to new, new possibly new music and new artists? Uh, we don't have AI. We have uh, we have uh, OI. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We have it's every, all of the content that we've got is all created by people. 
Um, okay. There's nothing that's done AI, at least currently. We may end up going to AI, even our playlists. Those are all curated by humans. Um, oh, wow. Just because of uh, efficiencies, we'll be going more toward AI as time goes on. But right now, everything is pretty manual. And when you see suggestions come up, it's because a human being went, wow, I think they're going to like this. And, you know, and we've all, we've just started a couple of different um, services because we didn't have those. Like we didn't have we didn't have a continuation feature or a radio feature before just a couple of months ago. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, so now you can, you know, once your Pink Floyd album finishes playing, it'll play similar things to Pink Floyd. But that service will get better and better as we learn you more and more, as the more you interact with the service. Um, so it'll start off a little slow, and you might even get bands in there that you're going, well, why would they play this? It's because, well, we... We don't really know you. We gotta we gotta start knowing you a little better. But those things are gonna improve quite a bit. We started that and oh gosh, there was one other thing that we started that I just totally lost my train of thought about. It'll come back to me. But yeah, we're uh most of the most oh, my weekly queue. We started uh, giving you a, a personalized um weekly playlist based on the stuff that you've listened to the week before. Um, okay. Once again, my weekly queue will continue to get better as we get to know you uh, also. But there are places we could use AI that we'll be using it soon, if not almost right now. Oh, that is way too cool. Way too cool. Um, are there any other features that have just come out that um, people should know, my audience should know about, that they should feel that you feel they should, uh, they would get value from? Uh, well, the thing that most people don't know about is all the cool editorial that's on Spot uh, that's on uh, Cobuzz. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things that we probably hold just as important to us as music. So all of the editorial and interviews and panoramas and um, features that we do are all are, are all hand done by people that actually love music and not just someone that's you know copying things from wikipedia or that kind of thing. one of our taglines is we are the music lovers cobas we are the music lovers and it's really absolutely true everybody at that company is focused on that one thing it's not about uh at least right now algorithms and um let's let robots do the business for us let's do it ourselves because we enjoy it we love doing it and we know what we're doing so instead of having to use an ai because that's not your primary business we don't we we're still mm -hmm. analog we're in that way we're analog mm -hmm. think we're analog writing uh we're analog communication so mm -hmm. um we'll probably be getting into more and more ai but you know Right now, it's it's working really good. Oh, well, good, good. And I I look forward to experiencing it more and more. Um, I you know the the UI has gotten way better than when I first discovered it. I think you guys have. I'm actually looking at it right now in my big old second screen over here. Um, the playlist function works great uh you can curate your own playlists i don't want to pop up um super it's, simple to use you have your it's okay, cool so it's a really really cool playlist and it's it's a little bit hidden but this might be good for your audience if you go if you're I'm on sure. the cobuzz app and you go down to playlists under playlists there's a section called um hi-fi audio partners and if you click on that list you'll see you have to, you have to tell me where, where, where do i go uh hi well go, just go down to playlists to begin with uh, go to the main page okay playlists uh -huh, and then you can scroll down below uh my weekly queue you see playlists there the cool bus playlists yeah yeah uh there should be a tab there that says hi-fi audio partners and a gray tab yeah you see that uh, there's high res and you see all Koba's playlists no well oh here uh, we go I, I found it hi-fi audio partners got yeah, it yeah there you go so in in this in this particular um uh, series of playlists you've got 
manufacturers that have got their chosen cuts of things that they actually um, design their products around. Huh. Uh, or it's the things that they play on shows to, 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 to really show off, uh, you know, how great their gear could be. But people are taught they're constantly looking for, um, or, or they're looking to make playlists that sound great. that just sound wonderful. Right. Uh, because they're one that, that that's a big reason people buy Cobas and want to, because they do want it to sound the best. Well, these guys have gone in for you and there are literally thousands of tracks right. with, I'm playlist. dying to see what John Durda chose. <laughs> Durda is fantastic. Durda. Uh, oh, he's got some good stuff uh, on here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. John, John uh, does uh, another real, one of my, another one of my very favorite that's super, super eclectic is uh, the Odyssey playlist. A guy named Grover Neville did that for, for uh, Odyssey and it is just fantastic. And it's not like there's 20 songs on there. There's like, you know, over a hundred songs on there. So there's a whole lot of them. There's one that I did on here called, I think, wow too. Um, and every song is there for a reason. It's uh, you know, what kind Ooh, of a definition I get, or what kind of mid range purity or high end extension or sound staging, but every song is there for a specific reason that will, you know, show off uh, what you've done wrong or what you've done right. Setting up your system. Okay. So here, here's my question. How does Audio Architects become a hi-fi a hi-fi partner? Oh, we'll have to let you do that. You're going to have to send me your, your playlist and your logo. Um, okay. If you're part of the audio community, this is something that we offer for free. Um, okay. So we've got a ton of, you know, great manufacturers out there. Clips, JBL, PSB, CH, Bowers and Wilkins, uh, Sonos. I mean, there's just a ton of them. Um, so we'd love to get your playlist and your and your logo up there. And it's it's something that you can really communicate with the people that you're communicating with on a musical level, as opposed to just, um, you know, this is what I think about it, and this is all analog. It's really great to be able to go. Well, I heard uh, the cello in in the third movement like I've never heard it before. Here's the cut. You can try it for yourself. So it's it's a great way to communicate um, without yeah, uh, having to be too wordy. So yeah, this is. I think this is a great feature to have uh, for the hi-fi audio community uh, to have people that are in the you know in the business. So that way it kind of humanizes some of these brands, you know, and obviously you and I know these people personally, but a lot of people don't. So this is a good chance for them to get to know their tastes, you know, uh, like, for example, Audio Quest has one. What if, you know, someone really resonates with their picks and they're like, OK, well, I want to check out Audio Quest and see what kind of stuff they got, because obviously they like the same music I do or Stereophile. I'm going to go buy one of their magazines or MoFi because... John's yeah. amazing. But um yeah. <laughs> and you'll get turned on to a lot of artists that you probably don't know. Most human beings stick around a hundred albums. That's mm. just the way we work. Um and it's it's wonderful being able to uh hop on one of these playlists and go, Wow, who are the you know, the grass cranberries? I've never heard of them before. Wow, this is blowing my mind. Um it, so you'll get you'll really get turned on to a lot of music and this is really a this particular uh, series of playlists is a great way to get turned on to a lot of music that mm. sounds just unbelievably great like nobody on this pl on any of these playlists is going to have the edgar winter uh, album that i mentioned earlier nobody's going to have white trash on there this is going to be stuff that just sounds amazing and makes your system sound amazing and so you'll end up going to one of these uh cuts and went wow i had no idea that you know bob dylan recorded with such quality back in like 19 you know 67 some of these older recordings are absolutely amazing and then the others you'll go oh my gosh who was the sound engineer on this thing <laughs> well, I did just notice you guys had a Coachella 2020 playlist, which is really good because a lot of people still aren't too comfortable going to a, a place like that because of the pandemic and because of whatever reasons. And 
you just brought that to their home. You know, you, you guys literally have every song that they're featuring at the festival. So that way they can enjoy it in the comfort of their own home without having yeah, to take an unnecessary great. risk. It's great for people like you because it, it's really, it's really good for everyone. But for, for people like you and, and people like you of your age, you look at the Co Coachella band playlist or the South by Southwest playlist and you're going, Oh, wow. Those guys, Oh, those guys, Oh, those guys. I look at these guys for, for the most part and go, uh, I've never heard of one of these bands. So <laughs> for people say my age, the Coachella mm -hmm. play, playlist is fantastic because I can go, Oh, well there's the, you know, the black mailboxes or, you know, somebody else I've never heard of. Oh, wow. They really sound good. So I end up getting turned on to a lot of great newer bands that I would have, you know, never heard. And as far as Coachella goes, I would have go, you know, I'm probably not going to go there because I just don't know any of the people that are playing there. <laughs> do, do you want to know something kind of depressing on my end? I'm pushing, I'll be honest, I'm 39. Uh, I'll be 40 in January. And the only... <laughs> The only artists that really jump out at me are Billie Eilish, because obviously she's pretty mainstream. I even know Billie Eilish. <laughs> um, I'm looking through the whole thing, and I don't know any of these people. What happened? Well, that's oh, that's. Are, that's are we way behind the times? I mean, are we? Yeah. Should we listen to this playlist just to see what the new, the young people are listening to? <laughs> I mean, I think so because you have all of these 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 folks that are trapped within their own hundred you know, their own hundred albums saying, Oh, well, there's no good music these days. And all oh, the only good music was when I was, you know, mm -hmm. between 14 and 25, that's where people, that's where people, their musical tastes typically lie. And then when you're going, you know, well, why don't you listen to uh, uh, hip hop or, or if you're listening to hip hop, oh, try, uh, you know, Super Tramp. And they're, oh, that's just, that's not my thing. It's not their thing because that wasn't when they were having the best time of their life. They were having their best time of their life listening to, you know, somebody speak the words with the, you know, killer beat behind it. And that's mm -hmm. just how they relate. And, and so when I let my son listen to, you know, Neil Young, it's like my dad let me listen to Neil Diamond. I'm going, you got to be kidding me. This is so boring. Mm -hmm. uh, but people in my dad's era, they're going, oh, my God, you know, Neil Diamond is the best guy I've ever heard in my life. It's just it's just what you were raised with. It really is. And there's some wonderful, wonderful music being recorded these days. Yeah. Neil, Neil Young really. uh has an opinion about streaming for sure. I'm not, I don't want to get into all that, the, the political background of it, but. Um, yeah, we don't even have to. Neil's really, his first thing was, he was the first guy in really in the world that was pushing high resolution audio. He is a real believer in it. And if you listen to Neil Young albums, they don't sound like Edgar Winter albums. They sound really good. In fact, uh, live at Massey Hall, um, that was done in 1971 will mm. absolutely blow you away with the quality. I think he was only like 22 years old then. He's sitting in a by himself with an acoustic guitar in Massey Hall with you know a, a ton of people, sold out crowd, and he just puts on one of the best recorded performances ever of that particular time. But yeah, and so you just you just never know. <laughs> yeah. And you have him uh, here on high res. I mean, he, uh, I believe you have him on high res, right? Yeah. Yeah. We've got, uh, we've got the Neil Young collection in high res and it, it's like I say, it was worth it. This guy has been kind of a scary and that looking individual. And in uh, let me pull up. He, the screen. Um, you know, he was, he had did the, this project back in, I think it's like 2013, 2014 called Pono. And so he was he was getting all of his friends really into high res, uh, David Crosby and, and Sting and I don't know, about 50 other people like that. Um, and they were all coming out of his demos going, oh, my gosh, I've never heard anything like this. So Neil was actually one of the first guys out there that was screaming that high resolution was better. 
And then, of course, since then, a ton of artists have come out saying the same thing. But even more importantly, you have the big engineers, the big recording engineers. Mm. Those are the guys that you listen to because half the musicians out there, they just honestly, they don't even know or they don't care about the sound. They're trying to get their ideas down on on tape or on in on, in digital and that's their big goal it's not oh my gosh the i can't hear all of the resolution or all of the decay in the room very few of these guys are doing that they'll come in there and go hey man can you make my guitar a little louder <laughs> right it's like that's what they're that's the main thing that most musicians are concerned with but neil he's always been oh man it's got to sound good or i'm not going to put it out or it's got to sound good or i'm not going to let you stream it on my service there you go okay one one last question for you before we uh before we wrap it up um spotify does something called spotify originals and that's when these artists agree to do a an original recording or a very exclusive recording to only be featured on the spotify platform which is annoying because <clears throat> now I'm beholden to 328 kilobytes per second on a song that may actually be, be a really good song that this artist put out. This is frustrating because I want to instantaneously listen to it on Cool Buzz, which I can't because it's obviously <laughs> exclusive to Spotify. Do you guys <clears throat> have any plans to do anything similar to that to where the artists are doing exclusive recordings just for quo buzz that'll be featured on and only on quo buzz yeah i mean we all try to do that i'm um, obviously spotify is probably better connected than we are because they're just you know they've been doing it for over 20 years mm-hmm. and um, have got all of these you know connections that long yeah it's been Oof. it's been it's been a long time. I think it's been somewhere around 20 years now that they've been, um, that they've been streaming. I got to look that up actually, because I think it's right around there. Um, so Spotify, just by nature of the dollars they have in the bank, they're going to be able to call up, you know, Prince. <laughs> Can you send us a recording from heaven? Uh, I know, you know, we're going to give you like $50 million to do that. And of course, you know, he's going to drop everything he's doing in heaven and make him a $50 million recording. Um, we do this, but it's more for the artist's love of the actual finished product than, um, Spotify or Cobus is going to give us, you know, a billion dollars to do this for them. We had just done one not long ago with a uh, Christian McBride mm-hmm. and we the studio and they recorded three tunes just for, um, Cobus and the, the recordings just are absolutely amazing. You can't get them anywhere else except Cobus, but you know we're probably not going to be the guy that's going to have the most um original content or exclusive content um but we do have some and as we get older as we grow more we'll have more and more of that um so yeah we that's a really great thing for spotify to do because it's just smart marketing if they it can is. do but um, at the same time you know, like i said i there's no way to download it there's no way to purchase it, so that way I could play it, you know, on on my own. Uh, that, that it's throttled, you know. The, the you, yeah, usually you can. It's throttled. Yeah, usually you can offline almost anything on their set their, their setup, so you've got it. But the point is, is like how many streaming services, you know, do people uh, really want and need? I'm a little different only because you know this is what I do. I need to have a few of these things, and I've oh, yeah, kind of come down to uh, Spotify, and I've got Tidal because mm-hmm. I worked there forever, and I've just got the account yeah. and Cobuzz. <clears throat> uh, but I really don't do too much with. I had Amazon for a while just to see what they were doing, and I really did not like that experience at all. Um, well, the UI but, is horrible. Yeah. Yeah. So I've kind of settled on um, uh, Cobuzz as my number one. Um, then probably Spotify as number two because I, I use them on my drums a lot. And uh, and then Tidal would be number three. And that would be, you know, just to do comparisons and that kind of thing with. I think I'd be right there with you, <clears throat> even though I'm, I'm kind of upset about the whole Spotify hi fi thing. I, you know, it is what it is. 
you know, that they have yeah, their Spotify these days, about 10 bucks a month. Oh no, no, it went up, man. It, uh, Cause I, Oh, I have the, uh, I have the best version you can get the premium version, which is the 320, 328 kilobytes per second. Um, Let's see, with Spotify. It's, uh, 320, not 328, but that's neither here nor there. Costs Spotify Premium. Uh, of course, try free for one month. <laughs> and they'll I haven't looked in a while. Yeah, I'm trying to view plans, but it's making me try to log in. Here, come on, come on, come on. Oh, here we go. So an individual plan's 10 bucks uh, for two people. Yeah, that's what I thought. Twelve ninety nine, but for the yeah. premium, didn't give me a premium price yet. No, that, that three twenty is it. Uh, pr- premium is is ten bucks a month. So, let's say you've got um, you've got uh, let's say Spotify and uh, Cobuzz. Mm-hmm. Your exposure is less than Cobuzz was when we first started. When we first started in the United States, we were twenty five dollars per month. Right. Um, I think title's still 20, but for, you know, just not much more than that, like 22 or 23 bucks a month, you could have, um, cold buzz and Spotify at the same time. Yeah. Cause you, you guys lowered your prices, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're, uh, we're down to, uh, I believe it's 1083 per month if you pay annually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cause yeah. I remember that that was the one thing that was kind of putting people off in the beginning was kind of the, the sticker shock. And then you guys started coming down, coming down, coming down, and everybody was yeah, like, Yeah, oh. that really wasn't. We would have still been 25. Uh, I think Amazon broke it first. So we just basically we met their price. I mean, it's all we were trying to do. Right. Um, then you have the other guys. Everybody always makes our first moves. We just won't make that move because, first off, we think that the service is worth $25 a month. I mean, for goodness sake, oh, yeah. you've got, you know, 80 million cuts and, and, you know, the most high resolution of, of any uh, service. So, I mean, in my own mind, if somebody said I could get that and it would only cost me 25 bucks a month, I'd be all over it. But things have progressed. And we're like 11 bucks a month now. And for, for that, you're going it's free. It's basically free. So I do that in Spotify. I don't even think about it because it's so inexpensive. Right. Yeah, and that's a good <clears throat> that's a good idea because then you can obviously get all the Spotify originals and have the luxury of having the the actual high res with Cobas. So that's not a bad idea. But um, well, you know, we were talking about sound is before. Mm-hmm. Um, you um, uh, there's do you do you use Shazam? I do. Oh yeah, so so I love Shazam because I mean it's oh, like too. the only thing. Yeah, it's like you'll be somewhere and you'll go, God, what is that? And you'll hit the button, and all of a sudden it comes back with the name of the artist, and the album that they play on. I got to tell you, I love that uh, that discover feature, especially like when you're in the grocery store, right? I mean, you're somewhere, you're just out and you just hear a tune you know and you're going oh wow that's so cool so you hit spot uh, you hit uh shazam and it it shows you the the track and okay well that's cool well you finish shopping and then you, then you come home and you realize that sound is has taken your your whole shazam list and made it a playlist oh, and God. you're, you're going Seriously. oh my gosh this is so cool because you never the one the thing that i kept i looked at this playlist and i'm going Wow, I love that song. I love that song. I love that song. I love that song. Is the thing is you the thing you never do with Shazam is you never Shazam something you hate, right? It's always right. something you're going, wow, that is really cool. So these like playlists what it is, like, yeah. really turn out cool on on uh Cobas from uh uh from uh, uh Shazam that, that have gone through uh sound is that's the only reason that I keep up with the subscription. I think it's like five bucks a month or something. Oh wait, um, the Okay, so the premium, they have a free subscription. That just yeah, connects. you don't even have to pay anything to, to transfer. That's, it's easy to do, and it's free. But if you're like me, I want to try to keep up with all of my playlists that I've got no matter where they are. So I just keep it going. And frankly, the only reason I really keep it going now is because of that stupid um, uh, uh, Shazam list. I'm I trying got to see if the because there's a premium and then a creator. I'm not sure what 
the difference is for a creator, but the premium is only three bucks a month annually. The creator is six twenty five annually, so it's double the price. I'm, so, I'm not seeing advanced smart links features, more syncs included and purchasable. Uh, I don't know. That's weird. It sounds like the premium is kind of the way to go. I'm sure that's probably what you have, right? Uh, yeah, I do now. But uh, like I said, when I first started doing it, I just did the free trial. And I think within about, uh, I guess it was about three hours, I had transferred, I don't know, probably 12, 15,000 cuts from one service to another. And I didn't have to touch it. That was the beautiful thing about it. That is crazy. Um, I'm just kind of reading about it, and it looks pretty pretty darn cool. Uh, you can export. Uh, oh my god, this is why didn't I know? Why did I not know about this? <laughs> I might have to well, do a I video. It, uh, hope it does you good. I might have to do a whole video surrounding that. Um, well, cool. Well, David, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I think Thanks the audience. Oh, no problem. I think the audience got a better feel for, for Cobas. Co I always say it wrong. I say Cobas. Cobas. And, it um, never bothers me. <laughs> well, when you're not inherently French, you know, it's it's hard to, it, their words are different. <laughs> well, it, it's actually not French. It's actually Asian. A Cobas is uh, an ancient instrument. It sort of looks like a guitar. You've, you've seen them. It, it's got the either a wood back or an animal uh, skin on the back of it with a stri one string or maybe oh, two strings. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. That's a buzz. And the only people that could play those when they were when they were actually new were a uh, shaman. And gotcha. they were said to uh, ward off evil spirits and even death. So that's what a kobuz is. Actually, it's one of the very first musical instruments ever made, and that's it's pretty, really not played at all. <laughs> it's pretty intense. I wonder how they were just sitting there thinking of a name for this thing. They're like, "We want that thing." <laughs> oh, that's that not thing. the exact pronunciation, but we've got one at Cobuz in France, and oh, that's uh, funny. I went there and 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 I said. Uh, well, you know, can I can I hold the cobus? And they're going, oh sure, Dave. And they got it out of the nice little rack they've got, and they gingerly handed it to me. I'm in front of the whole cobus staff at this point, and, you start and I think it, yeah, it exactly. I take it. I start, you know, doing a lead break on the thing. Oh everybody. my! They're probably all freaking out. It's probably worth like half a million dollars. <laughs> let, let me tell you, there was nothing more priceless than seeing a hundred cobus people like look at me like. Like this, and then everybody at one time just starts cracking up. We had the best time. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, man. But that does sound like a lot of fun. You guys sound like good people. Uh, are Probably. you guys going to have a presence at uh, – actually, you guys are at Expona, right? In We're at all the audio shows, yeah. We we think it's important to support the audio shows. So I'll be there. I'll be doing a lot of Flash DJ sessions. and. Cool. uh I think we got a panel and uh, and a whole lot of people if not most people i, I think will be using cobus to uh to power their systems there awesome yeah i have plans to go next year uh this year kind of just uh, i will after the flood and everything that happened to me in the you know beginning of january all hell broke loose so i'm just kind of getting things back my life back together our our, our, our lives back together <clears throat> so Next year is going to be my year for shows. So I'm going to do as many as I can next year. Um, I might sneak off to one this year, maybe near the end of the year. I'm not sure. But uh, for sure next year, you'll you'll see me at the shows. Uh, Giles, my friend Giles, uh, he will be at Expona next week. So you will be seeing Giles? Uh, Home Theater Fanatics. Oh, Giles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. I'll be yeah. looking forward to seeing him. Yeah, you'll see him probably probably geek out on some music and stuff. But uh, yeah, he'll be out there. Um, I think he's going to be moderating a panel or something. I don't know. He's got something going on. But he's he's going to try to go to most of the shows this year. I told him just you know send me a postcard, <laughs> make me jealous. Um, but yeah, yeah. Once once things settle down and and you know obviously the finances get back in order, I'll I will be going out and and doing my thing. We'll so, be looking forward to seeing you there. We'll certainly be there. 
Absolutely. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, this will be airing very soon. I'm going to cut it up and get it ready to go. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take us out real quick. All right, David, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you. Hopefully my audience got a huge, huge value from learning more about cool buzz and music streaming in general. I know I got a lot out of it just from that, um, the, the soundies, you know, the little Easter egg you, you have uh, given me and we're actually pretty close to Easter. So uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we will be sit- talking to you soon uh, because, you know, the world of music streaming is ever so evolving and changing and becoming better every day. I mean, if you, if you look at Quo Buzz two years ago and Quo Buzz today, it's almost like two different platforms. You know, you guys have evolved and, and upgraded your, your services so much. It's incredible. So I, I look forward to what happens next year and the year after that and year after that, because you guys got a, uh, you guys got a, a consumer and a patron in me. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's been nice being on the show.